Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. I'm Matt Miller. And I'm Hannah Elliott. And this is Hot Pursuit. All right, we have uh, a break from guests yes. this week, which is pretty good. Yeah. And I think this could be the first time I've ever remembered to promo the email address at the top of the show. It would be great for people to email us and uh, give us questions, topics, suggestions. Our email address is hotpursuit at bloomberg.net. Nice, hotpursuit at bloomberg.net. Um, and we do have awesome guests coming up. We like do. next week, we have Tom Wagner, which oh. I'm super excited about. I know. And we also have Soon Haggerty coming up, too. Yes. So a couple of, in different ways, giants of the industry. Titans, really. Titans. Uh, <laughs> Although Soon's, Soon's a petite woman, but her impact well, is large. Haggerty or Hagerty, or I never know exactly how to say it, but they've just... Um, Exploded. Their presence has grown exponentially, I right? Mean, they're in, a public in, company now, yeah. Uh, it's not. It's like media... Because right. I always see like Lifestyle. Jason Camissa videos, and Events. that's he works for them. And um, podcasts, they have mm-hmm. a, a podcast, Carmudgeon, sure. um, and others. I think they obviously have the insurance. They yeah. have the auctions. And soon's really interesting because she has been a lot of the the brains and savvy behind that. All right, so, so well, yeah. I'm looking forward to that. And then Tom Wagner runs Nighthead Capital. They own at least uh, big stakes in Singer. In uh, which is obviously, for some reason, the most important Porsche resto mod company. They really have. I mean, what have they been around? Fifteen years now. I think he's related to the guy from Iron Maiden, right? Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, and and they own Revology, which is a company I'm kind of obsessed with. Mm-hmm. They build. Uh, they build new 1968 Mustangs. They obviously they own Hertz, which is selling 700. I've heard of Hertz. Fifty million dollars yes. in debt right now. They own Yoda, a uh, oh, I didn't a racing that. team. Oh yeah, okay. That just I think they. This is this were... is the money behind a lot of name brands that we know. Yeah, and might not think that they're all actually under the same ownership group. All right, all of this to say, if anybody has any questions for yeah. Soon or Tom for yes. Hagerty or uh, what should we ask Nighthead? Yeah, please message us. And then we have a lot of stuff to talk about. You have a story on the terminal about a car I don't know anything about, so mm-hmm. I'm excited. You have a story about the Chiron successor, yeah, the Bugatti. the new Bugatti. Um, so, and, and I'm driving a couple of interesting cars, and also you got married. I did get married which, on Monday. Yes. I'm so, In fact, you let's, were there. Let's start, let's start with that, because it Thank was you. so much fun. Thanks for coming, Dan. And it was great. So you married Magnus Walker. Yes, uh, my fella. Famous designer, uh, collector, real estate magnate. Yes. Uh, and so he's he's just the best. He is I such a kind so I know. and generous I person. Know. I love him so much. He's a good man. Um, and I was really honored to be invited to the wedding, which so was on a Monday morning in Washington mm-hmm. Square Park. And I told I tell everybody that I went because I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so proud of myself. But um, everyone's like, why? Why on a Monday morning? So why? Why did you do it on a Monday morning? Just felt right. You know, we're not ex- exactly conventional sorts. You know, honestly, for a month, we kind of thought we might elope all together and just do away. We wanted to keep it simple and we wanted to keep it just us. And, you know, it just felt simple and nice. And I had a friend who I really wanted to be there who was leaving for Paris Monday night. So a big reason why we had it Monday morning is because we wanted her to be able to be with us. But Washington Square is a park that Magnus really loves and is very close to where we used to live when we lived in New York. And um, I just love New York so much. It just felt like a great celebration, sort of, it's like chaotic, and that's why I love it. You know, it just felt, it felt right. I, I can't tell you any other reason. I totally get, I totally yeah. get it, especially Washington Square, Square Park. I kind of grew up there too. I lived on Ninth and Broadway, then I moved to Ninth and University, so I was, and I was I love it. working at Generation Records, which is down on Thompson Street, so yes. my, every day my walk was through Washington Square Park. I just love it, and the arch is a really, you know, the, the big George Washington arch, I think it commemorates George Washington's birthday or when he became the president or there's some George Washington time. I've always thought of it as arc. just a little Arc de Triomphe. It, exactly. I, yeah. I, you know, we kind of knew it would be really pretty for photos and 
Yeah. It and just, you guys love Paris also. Yeah, we, we do love Paris. We do have that tattoo. So it just felt, you know, we just wanted something that felt simple and intimate and easy. And yeah, I guess that's the answer. It's sort of easy, breezy, felt natural and was fun. We it had was, the best time. It was great. It yeah, was great. We wouldn't and it was like, um, you know, when the sky's clear for an event. <laughs> yes. Because I was worried that, you know, people would be moving like a drum circle would oh, come over sure. and then like a marathon would run a through. A protest, an interpretive dance, someone on bongos. And all that happened before and after, <laughs> like immediately yes. after. But yes. when during the actual ceremony, it, like everything yeah. worked out perfectly. Well, I think the Monday morning thing really helped with that because Sunday we did go down there around the same time in the morning and it was pretty busy but monday you know everyone's going to work and it really i kind of just like going with the flow and trusting the universe that we found our little pocket and it worked out it was very cool i loved meeting your family they, uh, they're big fans of you matt they're very big well, they I, listen to the podcast i'm big fans of them as well <laughs> um meeting your sister and mm -hmm. meeting your dad and i also loved meeting all of your friends who I didn't know who they were when I was meeting them. So uh -huh. it was like meeting them as normal people. But then yes. I'm also a fan of their work because I realized afterwards that, yes. I, oh, I follow you on Instagram. Yes. You know? I love that that happened. I love I love that. You know, that was part of the goal, just that people would feel comfortable and chummy and chatty and it would feel really natural. I hope we can get some of them to be guests on the podcast. I think we could. Like Eli, fascinating dude. The, yes. Portia Malone. Yes, I mean, yeah, all those guys. Yeah, they they got interesting stuff to say. Well, it was great. So thanks for thank being you. there. Thank, thank you again you. for having me. It was really it was really fun. We honestly wouldn't change a thing. I I I will say I highly recommend doing a wedding that suits you. And you know you get so wrapped up into doing a wedding for other people, and I understand why that happens. But I highly recommend keeping it as simple as you can and just telling people. We love you so much, and we're doing it to suit us. Yeah. And it's very freeing. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Yeah. Well, it was it was such a cool event. Um, I told Magnus I'm going to commit to learning more about the Grateful Dead because I I feel really bad when you ever whenever you refer to them, which you do quite frequently. Well, <laughs> I have nothing. Like I got nothing. I couldn't tell you a single song. I couldn't tell you who's in the band. I I sort of know really? who Jerry Garcia is, but I think he died. But I will make a commitment. I'm going to try to listen to some of their music, and I will do some research. And if maybe I'll you, start wearing tie-dye. I mean, I can help you with this, okay. right? Yeah, so send me which direction. I can tell you that for my so for my whole like middle school and high school career, part of my personality was that I didn't like the Grateful Dead. That was part of your identity. I mean, all of my identities, right? So all my friends loved the Dead, and I like rebelled violently against it proclaiming it country music and oh. saying like how can you listen to this crap and i only listen to like metal and industrial you know yeah. like ministry Hardcore. and but yeah. when i when i was dropped out of high school kicked out of my house i opened a record store downtown with some friends of mine from second coming and um we sold bootlegs mm -hmm. cds of mm -hmm. live concerts and so the customer always wants to hear the quality of the concert so i my job was every day just playing these over and over again. And through that, wow, I became a huge fan of the music. Accidentally. Yeah. And not on purpose. Yeah. Like trying oh. not to. Yeah. That is really, wow. So, so what, what, you said it was country, country. Like, the, I mean, that's I'm what, trying to think, what were the reasons that you were saying it wasn't suitable? Well, I was only listening to like ACDC yeah. and Black Sabbath. It just wasn't that. And exactly. It wasn't that. It, was, yeah. it didn't have that, doesn't have that vibe at all. Yeah. Now, so why do people like The Grateful Dead? Well, it, it, I think if you listen to it in the right, uh, and you're in the right, do you, moment you don't have to if you're in the right drugs, space right? you do, do you not have, have to be on drugs, drugs at all in fact okay. i got i really got into it it will open you up and mm. it's it just the music will take you uh and make you your life better i think um okay. i don't know how to describe it okay. well i haven't really thought about okay. it but i will go in with an open heart and i started going to shows also mm. oh yeah um Luckily, yeah. before Jerry died, but good. But still, I love going to Dead and Company, and I take Edna to Grateful Dead cover bands, That's and cool. 
Um, so I recommend you start with Cornell because it's is like, that an album? It's a show that they did okay. in 1977. A live, a live show. Yes. At Cornell. At Cornell. Okay. University of Barton sure. Hall, and sure. it's like the best, and okay. that's what got me really okay. into it. So okay, that's the starting point. Yeah. Great. Noted. But also, you might not like it. Some people don't like The Grateful Dead. You know. I'll, I'll give it a fair shot. I'll give it the old college. In try. that case, I think you will because okay. most people do. Also, okay. I've never been. I mean, the whole to history of like Jerry and. <laughs> Bobby and Pigpen and like the whole crew like yes. I- in San Francisco and the hate and yes. uh, it's like so like if you read Tom Wolfe's Electric Kool-Aid Acid sure, Test sure, of which is a great book yes um, part of the canon really yeah and then the dead is in that book because okay. they do the acid test or they take yes. part in the acid test Alice's acid test and it's so okay. so cool okay all right Rabbit wait what trails. kind of music what is like it for you like what mm. music occupies your soul Honestly, like synth bands, like I really like churches. I really like uh, Boy Harsher. I really like, I, I kind of like Grimes, you know, like her early stuff. Like, uh, honestly, like everyone that came, that sort of came from like a Kate Bush or a Daft Punk, but like future generations that, that developed after them, I, that type of sound really resonates with me but I like I like a lot of things you know I like Jay-Z I like Mariah Carey I mean I will go to my grave Ugh. saying Mariah Carey is underappreciated I love Mariah uh, me Carey too. and yeah. I, I'm i proud to say I love Sade like Sade I will listen to all the Moi time OC. I, Big Mama Thornton is I listen to her on Sundays she's church but if me. you're putting together your like the playlist for your wedding for example mm. <laughs> or for your funeral is it going to be synth pop no, 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 no. I, I couldn't tell you who that would be. Interesting. I'll have to let you know. All right. Um, let's talk about cars a little bit. Yes. Uh, and start with the Bugatti successor. Well, let's start first with the Z4 because I drove yes. it to your wedding. Yes, um, you did. How was that? So I had it. You know, a BMW let me drive the new Z4 M40i, and I will say the first day I drove it, I didn't really like it. Um, the drive perform the performance. Yeah, or the I looks felt like what? I felt like uh, there wasn't enough weight on the front, and mm. um, the brakes were a little bit scary when I had to use them in a hurry. But mm-hmm. at the, after after that, and I did like a little video review with the camera mm-hmm. guy here, mm-hmm. and I said kind of all that stuff. And then mm-hmm. after that, for the rest of the week, hmm. I loved it. What changed? I guess I just had to get used to going from a Dodge Challenger. Oh yeah. To oh, yeah. a BM to a little two seater convertible. Oh yeah. It, it's a totally different feel. So you had obviously, to recalibrate. in 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 the Challenger, all of the weight is on the front, right? Yeah. And mm-hmm. here, it's a fifty fifty. The Z four is a fifty fifty balance. So it's a very different kind of driving experience. But I got immediately addicted to it and started driving it like everywhere. I started making excuses cool. to. I started picking people up at the airport. <laughs> No, which no, yeah. So that from is insanity. Scarsdale to no. Laguardia, what? I was like, oh, I'll pick her up. Yeah, I'll no. drop her off. I even took someone to JFK. What? So I made like three airport trips. Yeah, that's unbelievable. Um, I did it at off like off peak hours, so I could really uh-huh. drive the car. Mm-hmm. And I think also sometimes I forget how much I love driving a manual transmission. Oh, you didn't mention that it's a, it's a manual. Yeah, it's yeah. a stick. Oh. In fact, oh. I think it's uh, I think they're only. Three two door soft tops that you can get with a stick in production oh, that's these a big days. Deal. That's fun. I think the only choice is if you want that experience, which is like the classic six speed. Yeah, okay. driving experience. It, I think the only thing you can get is a Miata, uh-huh. uh huh, the Z4 or a Porsche sure, Boxster. Sure. And where does the price of the Z4? Obviously it falls in the middle the of the Miata, two, but not as not as no, much as a Boxster. Yeah, exactly. So I think okay, a Miata is about forty. Right, optioned out sure. the way you want it. Um, the Z4 is about 75, okay. a little bit less okay. optioned out the way you want it, which seemed kind of expensive. But then I yeah. then I put together a Boxster on, you know, the configurator and the way I would Where want did that it. end up? Like 120. For a Boxster? Well, I want the 4.0, well, okay. you know. Well. But it's, I think, a good deal. Okay. At first I thought, that's very expensive. But yes. A, I, now I love the weight balance. Yeah. <laughs> uh, B, the brakes, you do have to dig a little. Okay. To get them to stop, uh-huh. um, but okay. you, you get used how's to that. Steer, how's the steering? 
How tight is this? I thought the steering was great. It's not okay. overly tight. Okay. It's not it's not like an M car, even though it's the M forty I, but it doesn't have the S fifty eight. Yeah. It has the B fifty eight in line six. So it's great. Three hundred and I don't know, three hundred sixty no, three hundred eighty two horsepower, I think. Um so it's more than enough. And just rowing your own gears is so much fun. I'm very curious. You mentioned driving people to the airport. And, of course, my mind instantly goes to luggage space in the trunk. It's surprisingly roomy with in the, the trunk. With the top down? With you, the top down, you yes. You still had luggage space. Yeah, it's not one of those convertibles where when you put the top yeah, down, you can't fit anything away. in the trunk. My brother had a Camaro like that when... Yeah, um, totally useless. Uh, the first car I ever wrecked was a Renault uh, oh. GTA, which was the same. Like No, in this, even when you put the top down, the trunk is big enough for a huge... Hmm. My goddaughter's suitcase fit in there, and she's wow. a 17-year-old girl oh, who came to stay with us for two weeks, so... <laughs> That's the true test. So it's big. Wow. Uh, yeah. Like, I don't personally think I need the convertible experience on a regular well, basis. Well, that was my next question. Like, how are you with convertibles in general? Do I you always like, think and I how want how is the one. wind buffeting? There's none. Okay, because that's Some the other thing Some genius engineered that thing, and there's no wind buffeting with the top down. Okay. But um, I always think, like, you know, I'm configuring 911s, like, all day, every day, mm-hmm. and I always like I like the shoulder line of the 911 mm-hmm. Cabriolet with the Me top too. down. Me too. But with the top up, I don't. I do not but, think it looks. But but um, in real life, I'm not. I'm not really going to put the top down because I'm nope. bald for one. Well, so I have to wear a hat. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's way too hot, you mm-hmm. know. Unless you live in like the northern parts of um, mm-hmm. Scandinavia, it's too hot. It's too hot. And um, it's loud. It's loud. It, this isn't actually. Okay. It's this isn't. It's like a little too loud to be on a conference call. I did a couple conference calls oh. with the top down, <laughs> and also in New York City, that's not a great <laughs> experience. But I have to say, I, I came wow. away thinking. I've always wondered why BMW doesn't make the Z8 again because I think yeah, it's I know, such love, a gorgeous yeah, car, and this is, I think, worthy of being a Z8 successor. Whereas the Z3 never was. I don't think it was intended to be, and no, also it's. No. Not. No, you need something a little brawnier than that. This is big. I think it's I think okay. it's about the size of a Z8 uh, in terms of the dimensions, wow. and it's a beautiful design. What color was the car that you had? It was called Frozen Deep Green Metallic. Ooh. So Ooh, it was one pretty. of the matte colors. Um, normally, I'm not a fan of matte finishes, uh-huh. but I, uh-huh. it really worked. Uh-huh. For me, I'm a car wash guy, so mm-hmm. that's a problem because you can't take it to a car wash. It'll ruin mm-hmm. it. So instead, I washed it myself in the driveway. Did the girls help? Yes. Or at least Edna? Edna yeah. helped. Okay, good. Uh, well, good. you could say help. Yeah. It wasn't really a help, but she definitely was there doing Moral stuff. Moral support. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, I just came away thinking, like, even though, so for, I'm 6'3", I was a little bit cramped. What about the foot room, speaking of cramp? Like, in the footwell, when I you're shifting. I put Natasha yeah. In, in, she had in the passenger on. seat. With, she, had her, she said she had more a, than enough room. That's a tall woman, and she would let you know. She told me she was recently in a Jag uh, two seater, and there was not <laughs> enough F-type. room. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this was, there There was more than enough room. For me, I felt a little cramped because, you know, I'm used to giant yeah, vehicles. Yeah, yeah. So I'm used yeah. to, like, right now I'm driving the Hummer EV. It's huge. Well, I'm used go. to big trucks. But I found myself thinking, I would take this. I. Don't care that it's a little bit tight for a huge person like me, um, mm-hmm. because the trade-off for that motor, which is sonorous, like mm-hmm. it sounds beautiful, um, and this that transmission, amazing. And once I got used to the weight balance, so fun. I really loved it. I really did. I mean, the fact that you're doing multiple trips to the airport says everything. Yeah, that's that's a good litmus test, I think. Yeah, cool. So. Huh. That was your wedding car for me. I, lo- I love it. Because you ca- you went back uptown to get the car yes. to drive it back down, right? Yeah, because I had Before to anchor cake. a TV show until 10. Yeah. Your ceremony is at 1030. Yes. And I knew I wouldn't make it from here, which is like Bloomingdale's, mm-hmm. down to Washington Square Park yeah. in a car. So I quickly took the subway down, <laughs> which was awesome. Um, very I love, quick. I'm a, I love the subway. And efficient. Yeah. And then uh, I came back to get it to drive to the reception. Yeah. Plus I, plus I plus I I realized I could take Natasha yeah, down. That's nice. So that was a good excuse. I know she appreciated yeah. that. I'm always skeptical when I drive a new BMW and I typically come away impressed. I have Why to say. Why are you skeptical? Uh because there's so many haters, you know, online. I spend too much time in forums. Oh, yeah. Everybody's mad that it's not like it used to be or 
mm-hmm. that it isn't, you know, like an E46 M3 mm-hmm. or or an E30. You know, you know, I find that 99% of people in online forums haven't actually driven the vehicle. It may be the case. <laughs> so yeah. therefore, I take their opinion with a lot of grains of salt. But I also <laughs> usually have the first day I drive, like, for example, the I-5. Mm-hmm. I drove that and I thought, OK, not for me. And for most of the rest of the week, I just drove my car. Yeah, I remember. Um, I had it for a week. That. Yeah. And then the last day I drove it like in anger, you know, up to Bear yes. Mountain. Just You flogged it. And it was amazing. Maybe that's what it needed, honestly. So, and I think a lot of a lot of these vehicles, you need to have more than a half hour of seat time in them. Yes. Well, that's for sure, because I do think maybe first impressions are informative, but they can't be the only impression. Yeah, because you're used to you're 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 completely. still feeling what you got out of, right? Yeah, completely, completely. And um, it takes a while to it transition your muscle memory. I agree. I completely agree. Yeah. Yeah. So how's the Hummer? We'll get to that. I want okay. to hear about the okay. Bugatti successor. Okay. Okay. Um, and then because we because uh, we both have driven the Hummer and we. Oh yeah. And yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it's you probably can guess how it is kind of. Um, uh, anyway, I I I want to hear about this because. I did love driving the Chiron. Chiron. I always Are, say Chiron. Now, why do you say that? I, because you're in news. You know what? Because <laughs> that's one of those things where I said it to myself in my head for years oh. before I ever said it to anyone else out loud. Yes. You know, I, it was out forever before I finally got a chance to drive it. I went up to the Bilsterberg in Germany and I drove it oh. with Stephen Winkleman. Whoa! On the track. That's a good drive. It was that's a good first drive. It was very fun. I'd never yeah. driven anything with sixteen cylinders I mean, and four yeah. turbocharged. Anyway, it was amazing. But I'm interested to see what they follow that up with. I don't even know I'll what it's called. I'll tell you one thing. What is it called? It's called a Turbion. Turbion. The, the Bugatti tub- Turbion. And um, it's not a W16, actually. No? No, it's a V16 hybrid. Interesting. Yeah. Hybrid I get, because you can do so much, and we, yeah. we know. Um, yeah. Yeah. But it's a, v- v- it's a V16. It's 1,800 horsepower. This is the first time they've ever, obviously, done this type of configuration um, top speed they're saying is about 276 miles per hour, and they they they're saying like this is actually the hardest configuration choice for following up the Sharon. Like they could have done another W16, they could have gone full electric, they could have tried to do something different, and this was like the most difficult option for them. So of course, and yeah, so of that. course, and you know they kind of justify it like okay, obviously Bugatti Rimac is a company together now. I still don't understand yeah. the configuration. It's, it's really, but... yeah. So Porsche and Rimac formed a joint venture in 2021 that incorporated Bugatti is the easiest way that I can ah, say that. Finally, someone explains yeah. it to me so I understand yeah. it. And and so Mate Rimac, who's the CEO of that group who oversees Which is Rimac, the electric supercar Which is maker. the electric, yeah. yes, is also overseeing Bugatti. So now, of course, they're sharing everything, which is good for Bugatti. And Honestly, I don't know when the idea to make the Chiron successor a hybrid developed because at one point it did seem like they were thinking that Bugatti could go electric. And the thing nudging that was within VW, what role was Bugatti going to play? Because a big part of VW's business strategy for the next decade is elect- it's centered around electrics. And electric technology. So when you have a 115-year-old brand that's made its bread and butter on massive internal combustion engines, how does that fit? So part of the reason why Porsche and Rimac joined together and incorporated Bugatti was to help figure out where Bugatti would fit into VW Group in a broader sense. And apparently, this hybrid car, the Turbion, is their answer. And Mate Rimac was on Bloomberg TV. um, And he said, basically, they've decided that Bugatti still needs to have an element of analog in it. I hope so. Yes. I I think that's really where they landed, that this is such an old company. It's a French company. It needs to have an element of analog, something that can be timeless. And they're sort of sensing that cars with a lot of screens and computers may look outdated in 10 years because obviously technology is evolving so quickly. So the only way to really stay 
timeless and classic and to know that your car in 50 years on a lawn is going to look timeless and classic is still to maintain some sense of analog. Thank God someone's getting that. Yeah, so I thought that was really interesting. It makes sense. I don't think that's just marketing speak. I actually think that is accurate for them. It seems logical. It seems like are the other bit like you've driven uh, the new Rolls Royce, Mm -hmm, the Spectre, um, the electric. Is it also fairly analog? They don't have a ton of screens in it, do they? No, they've got a they've got a screen that you can hide if you want. And actually, there is a screen in this new Bugatti, the Turbion. There is a screen that is hidden. Um, at the top of the dash, you can make it appear by pushing a button. Um, but some interesting things in this one are if you have, there's, if you have the screen hidden, um, you start it and stop it by pulling a lever, like the old Bugattis, like you literally pull a lever and push a lever to turn it on and turn it off. Nice. On top of the steering wheel is a three gauge cluster that looks like sort of a mechanical watch and i think this is all tied in with the name and the steering wheel turns around those gauges so those gauges Ah. are stationary they're planted in the center of the steering wheel so i had made the watch connection until you said exactly that's the kind of watch that you can sort of see through and is a component in a watch that basically helps it keep time It, it basically makes the watch keep time and um keeps it on track, basically, from my from my understanding. Well, it's usually when they have the Turbion edition or yes. of a watch, that means you can see through it. Yes, and it, it well, right. I, the fact that you're seeing through it just means they're showing off right the this, Turbion this thing that rotates the components to increase accuracy. Basically, okay, that's in a wristwatch. That's very yes. cool. Yes, so it's I I do think it's cool. I mean, the car itself kind of looks like a Chiron. It looks kind of the same um the doors well, it was a open good look up. yeah the, the doors open up instead of out they open up in like you know like the billionaire doors sure if you have so three commas cool. in your net worth that's a car for you there you go there yeah. you go and you know the price here is 3.8 million euros so that's like 4.1 million dollars so yeah price the price has gone up um they're going to make 250 of them deliveries are going to begin in 2026 it's exciting. You know, it seems like a it's natural interesting they went with the V12 instead of the W16. I was very surprised. Yeah. And the... A v6, V16. Uh, so, so, sorry, yeah. a V16 instead of a W16. Mm-hmm. So I guess they just put two inline eights together in a sense. I don't... I honestly don't know. That's... I don't know. That's strange. Because the, re- the, the reason it was a W16, I guess, was that they had two V8s right. Right. bolted together. That's right. how I thought of it in my head. And they also... The Volkswagen Group does this, right? Because um, Bentley has the W12, sure. right? So Which W is kind of there. Thinking of going away with. Interesting. And do they yeah. put the, uh, is the electric component like it's two, on the front two, axle? Two and... on the front, one on the back. 1,800 horsepower total. Okay, that's um, what I Top speed of 276. I did ask if they'll be doing any variants that would potentially go for a world record, you know, land speed. Right, Bugatti's because the Chiron went over that. 300. Yeah, you know, they they yeah. don't want to comment on that. No, you know, it's a it's a no comment. But I think maybe we could think about that. I don't right. see why not. It's interesting that uh, Remac, I wonder if they would go for it. You know? I feel like, I mean, with the Nevera there. Remember last year at... During Pebble Beach, Rimac had just set a record. I'm going to not remember. Yes, it was the fastest it, in reverse, right? Yeah, was that it? I knew yeah. it was something kind of <laughs> yeah. quirky. So, yeah, they care about records, which half the time I'm like, does anyone care at all? <laughs> I mean, that's one that probably no, but also, like, if James Bond is going to use that car, sure. they could make something there you go. of that. You know, he yeah. has to go backwards super fast. There you go. Um, yeah. Well, cool. I, yeah, it's cool. I have to say, Bugatti is another one of those. When I first saw the Veyron, mm-hmm. I thought, this is ugly, and I didn't like it. And also, the first few times I saw the Chiron, mm-hmm. I didn't really love it. But it grew same. on me. Same, same, same. And by the time they did, they did like a 110-year anniversary edition mm-hmm. that was like blue on blue. And I, I thought- I think that was their last edition. Like, like that is, that's coming off the production line like this year, and then that's it. I thought it was beautiful. Yeah. Or maybe it already has. Some it might have already. I wish somebody would daily drive one of these kind of cars. You, you know? don't think people do? No, I don't think so. I think they keep them low mileage. I saw no. on Bring a Trailer there was uh, I think a 1993 964 Turbo that right. had 170,000 miles Whoa. on it or something. Did it sell? 
uh, no, it's still it's still going as we speak. It's still going, and it was at one fifty. And I thought, wow, you know what? I'd rather have that than one that has like seventeen Definitely. miles because it's been, it's you know it's going to work. Completely, yeah. it's actually <laughs> it's been tried and tested, yeah. and yeah. And completely. obviously, that's not the same no league question. as a as a Bugatti, but it would yeah. be cool if somebody bought a Bugatti or a Pagani, you know, and then know. daily and drove it, used it, like I mean, from you know. Uh, Greenwich to the city every day. Yeah, you know? and the thing about the Bugattis that I think separate it separate them a little bit from other million multi million dollar cars is the cat the interior cabins of the Bugattis are like Bentley level of comforts and just sort of opulence. Where I think you know even in the Rimac Nevera, it's it's a little more utilitarian. It's a little more minimal. Right. Or something like the Pininfarina Batista. You know those are multi million dollar electric hypercars but their interiors are not quite as cushy right as the bugatti so like to your point you could live in it and be comfortable true do you think it's do you think bugatti is at the same level of uh luxury and design as pagani because i feel like pagani like every single piece is machined out of aircraft grade aluminum and they're you maybe know, over-designed in a I way. I don't find Pagani as usable or as practical or, you know, to be honest, I've never driven a Pagani. No. I've been driven in a Pagani, but they did not want me to drive it, which I'm instantly skeptical of. Ah. You know, they, they wanted to drive me in it, but they wouldn't let me drive it. So, of course, you know, I wonder why. I feel like Pagani is heavier on the design element and not as much on the engine you know because they buy yeah, those motors from it's, from daimler it's harder to whereas take pagani bugatti is all about honest. the engineering of course, right of course and it comes from you know the you can't compare 115 years of automaking like there that you can't buy that it just is to me that is such credibility and authority and authenticity and then to have the backing of vw group it's tough to compete with that in any way, you know. And then with the the technology of Rimac, it's like, I mean, that's your dream team, yeah, basically. I suppose. Yeah. I just like Pagani has like a smaller workshop, factory workshop, sure, and they are building more like one at a time. I know. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> whereas yeah. Bugatti, they could be building like five or six at a time. Mm -hmm. It's practically. Uh, but you're still. I mean, it took them years to make all 500 of the Chiron. I think they made 500 total and. It took them years to do that. So it's not like they're mass producing. Bugattis. Well, if I had either one, I would daily drive it. Yeah, cool. Yeah. I hope you would. I'm driving something that's crazy, right? So the Hummer EV is just crazy in a lot of ways. And yeah. I'm glad that you have driven it too. Do you think it's a crazy idea? Like not a good idea? No, I think it's a very good idea. Like everyone wanted to, at the time, like we're all going green. It's hundred percent EV. There wasn't any backlash yet. You know, it was still like, yeah. this was uh, 2022. Elon Musk is a God for saving the world, <laughs> you know, and everyone has to drive an EV and you couldn't even be mad about it. Like you had to agree yeah, that this was our future. Voice dissent. And so I love that Mary Barra and Mark Royce are like, okay, I see your 65 kilowatt hour battery and I am going to raise it to a 210 kilowatt hour battery. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this is a 10,000 pound vehicle. I don't yeah. know actually how much it weighs, but well, they wouldn't tell me, but they said it I'm was guessing they it's... told me it was over nine. Yeah. Okay. So um, <laughs> this thing is so gigantic. Obviously it's a Hummer. So not like the H2 or the H3. It's supposed to mimic the H1, like an actual yes. military vehicle. It's wide enough that I can't reach my wife, no. you know, if she's sitting in the passenger seat and I'm driving. And it does zero to 60 in three and a half seconds. And did I'm, you do launch mode? Yes. I mean, of it course, made it's me called Watts to Freedom, which yeah. is like <laughs> it's, to half the country. That's an offensive I know. phrase. Yeah, I know. I wasn't going to repeat it. I love it. I mean, <laughs> the thing is, if you're going to do it, do it right. In I for agree a penny, in for a pound. So I agree with that. It has these little American flag like indentations on the side, which is perfect. Yes. You know, my uh, I have a my French neighbor um, was like, yeah, if, if a redneck with a lot of money that wants to buy an EV, this is it. You know, it's so weird because you're right. Like since 2022, I drove in 2022 and I think it sort of just come out and like EVs are way more political now. Yeah. Than even then. 
And yeah, it, for sure. And, it's, for and sure. It's, it's totally weird because it is an EV, but then it's got all these, you know, patriotic things. And it's really sad that, like, if you take them on their own, an EV doesn't mean anything. Uh, the flag is not a political thing. It yes. should unite us. What I um, love about it is that, um, <laughs> so people who are anti-EV uh-huh. will go on a rant about, uh, no tailpipe emissions, but they'll go on sure. a rant about the production and you know some the 11-year-old f- is mining all the cobalt for this. And I, I, I get that. Yes. You know, and But EV fans are like, you know, they'll push back. They'll say yeah. it's still a greener vehicle than an ICE vehicle. But even this is an EV that even EV people hate. You know, <laughs> that's true. They feel like, and by the it's way, just ridiculous. It is ridiculous. I was driving through a uh, town in Scarsdale the other day. I realized if I lose control and I run up on the curb, I'm going to go up over the curb and just like knock Fly over that whole family. Yeah, like it could be a dangerous so, vehicle. Uh, driving wise, what did you think? I mean, it doesn't. At first, you're like, this is too wide, mm-hmm. but it, that goes away in like literally two and a half minutes for me. I guess mm-hmm. I'm used to driving like the F-250 or the big Silverado 2500, so it doesn't feel that much bigger than a heavy-duty truck. And um, How has your range been? I have been abusing it for the last couple of days, good, good. and uh, I think I started with two, 350 miles, and I have 270 left. Oh, that's pretty good. Um, it is I, I expected it to have like a huge turning radius like it'd have mm-hmm. to do like five point turns but it's got a better turning radius than any of the other vehicles in my driveway yeah, yeah. um i tried the crab walk it's obviously gimmicky mm-hmm. and i couldn't really control it that well but it was still fun to yeah. have tried right um and uh did you use the super cruise at all did they not yet did they have, okay i haven't been in a super cruise situation because i'm okay. just driving from sure. scarsdale to new york and back it's still a little like you can't use it all the time um yeah i think even when i use uh you know bmw's whatever their kind of semi self-driving technology is i only mm-hmm. use it like when i'm on the a5 sure. you know to Karlsruhe, and i'm not going to turn for yeah. 50 miles but i i, I think it's probably up there with the best of them. I don't really care about that so much. I, I like a lot of room, uh, a luxurious cockpit, and, you know, fun stuff. So, like, I, having 35s on this double-wide SUV is fun Okay, I'm going to push back a little bit on the luxurious cockpit, because I, I mean, don't inter- remember thinking it. Okay, you're right. You're okay. Right. okay. You're saying it was capacious. Yes. A capacious cockpit. Yes. Because I would say it's it's like inside from what I remember, it was extremely utilitarian, you know, like kind of the inside of a truck. My uh, my thought was the designers did this on purpose so that when mm-hmm. they update the car, they'll have something to make better. Now, why <laughs> did they give you the car now? Because I feel like they haven't, we haven't heard There's about a new, this vehicle. This is the new version, right? Oh, the it is? 3X. Yeah. From a business sense, I wonder how many of these, I, I haven't heard about it in so, the news or from them so my, for a so, year and a half. So my as terms in terms of buying one, right? Yeah. Um, it's still a hundred and I think hundred six grand for this version. Mm-hmm. The one version is one hundred forty, and mm-hmm. when you option it up, it's going to be a little more. But I've looked on Auto Trader and found some twenty twenty fours with six, seven, eight thousand miles that mm-hmm. are eighty five. Okay. So I would be happy to let the other guy take the depreciation hit. And pick it up for, because you know that my most important criteria is, does it fit two rear-facing car seats yes. in the back? Yes. And it'll still allow me to fully recline, and it does. So, Aren't you worried about buying a used electric vehicle that the battery is degraded already? And you're buying- I, would, I would be worried about that, yes. So I'd have to see, first of all, I don't think my wife would ever let me do this. So it's totally mm-hmm. not happening. But uh, <laughs> Hypothetically. I think... You you can you can accept some degradation in a 210 kilowatt hour battery pack because mm-hmm. it's gigantus. Okay. Uh, also, I expect at some point some technology to appear where you can swap out batteries or re- install a better battery pack for all of these electric vehicles, not just this. Right. At some point, you're going to want to do a V8 swap, whatever that means in electric worlds. Right. Who's telling you that's going to happen? No, uh, no one tells th- me it's going to happen. I just because I'm like I certainly wouldn't buy 
a Hummer EV thinking in three years they're going to have a new battery that I can swap in. No, no, no. I, I don't think three years. Okay. I think like 15 years. Okay. There's going to be, you're going to be able to put a flux capacitator in it <laughs> and it, it'll be like, you know. What if in 15 years we're actually back to internal combustion? You've been talking to people at Porsche a lot, haven't you? I, I actually haven't. I actually I haven't been talking to anyone Driving for the e-fuels? past week. I'm on my honeymoon. I no, mean, okay, I, okay. Uh, yeah, I think that's Ooh, that's a possibility. Though. That's a possibility. But I I think look, these vehicles they're not going to all be just thrown away in the dumpster. All of these EVs, mm-hmm, I mean, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you'll, you'll, mm-hmm. You're going to take the interesting ones mm-hmm, in ten mm-hmm, or twenty years and mm-hmm, resto mod them. Mm-hmm. And this is a prime <laughs> candidate for that mm-hmm. because it's so big and so different looking. Even if yeah, you don't do like, like the that. way that looks, it doesn't look like a every other jelly okay, bean on the road. Okay, here's a question. Speaking of big and different, would you buy this or a Cybertruck? This, hands down. Why? In an instant. Why? I, I really appreciate the looks. It reminds me of an actual Hummer. I love the look of that. It's oh, wide I'm and low. Um, hmm. You can still, there's still decent visibility, especially at the back. Um, Interesting. And... There's also something to be said for buying from General Motors, from the General, oh, you know, from a good old American brand. Tesla's American. Yeah. My friend. I know. It's different, you know. Is it? Yes. I mean, you know, Elon Musk's grandfather didn't work at Tesla. I didn't know we were going to do a legacy thing. Here. No, but it's like it's a GM, has, GM has the tradition of Detroit. And I, you know, Tesla's a different vibe. And if mm-hmm. that's your vibe, I'm, I'm happy for you. But it's not mine. So... Okay, noted. That doesn't mean I don't like any new products. You know, I I I, I would compare this to a Rivian. If I'm going to buy this, do I buy this or a Rivian? I don't know because I haven't the driven Rivian the Rivian. Doesn't look as unusual. Like we're talking about unusually... the Rivian looks more like futuristic and but probably more elegant. It's more like Patagonia. Like you know, Rivian's all about we want to be the Patagonia of electric vehicles. So we'll give them that. Right, and then. You know, they still have an 850 horsepower quad motor version. So, sure, but I mean, if we're talking aesthetics, the Hummer's an iconic look, and it's an aggressive affront and assault. True, and it's not going to apologize. And I think the Cybertruck's the same in a way, but the Rivian's kind of in the middle. You know, the Rivian's trying to be like you know more basic. Well. So to be fair, I haven't really. I've only seen a Cybertruck once in real life. What? And it was just shocked driving by. I see. I see in New York? five a day. You no, live in, in LA. <laughs> that's very different. I mean, they're you live very in, you know, the People's Central. Republic of Central. Tesla. Yeah. That's different. Yeah. I, it's wild how many I see every day. So every day. Here we don't in New York, mm-hmm. you barely even see Model S's. It's mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. Model 3 and Model Interesting. Y. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. I, so anyway, I can't make a real call on a cyber truck until I've A, seen it in real you life and studied drive. it. And B. I would have to drive it. You um, should Turo one. I haven't driven one. You can one. expense that, I'm sure. It's I might, research. I might try that. Yeah. Uh, I also haven't driven a Rivian. Mm-hmm. Have you driven the Rivian? Mm-hmm. Is it awesome? I imagine it's awesome. I wouldn't use the word awesome. I would use the word interesting and good enough. Well, and the, the other <laughs> thing is, Hannah, I, I, I kind of gravitate towards products that make other people angry, <laughs> you yes. know? And in a way, the yes. Hummer kind of sure. does that I, too. It, the yes. soccer moms are going to be like, of not happy that reaction. it's EV and they're angry that I'm driving well, this. see, you know? this is true yeah. art. Like art should provoke a reaction. And yeah. if you get people extremely happy or extremely upset, you at least have made them feel something. It's far better to do that than to just have them be neutral. Yeah. You know, that's an appliance. An appliance leaves people feeling like, oh, it's okay. I also like to drive big vehicles with big yeah. wheels. Yeah. And uh, this thing, I feel very, I'm like on my sofa, yeah. you know, piloting this You and giant, Arnold. Yeah. I, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, I've never driven actually an original Hummer. And I imagine oh, it's not a good experience compared. Yeah, this is a very either. pleasant experience. Like it's nice when you yeah. push the pedal, it goes fast. Mm-hmm. When you push the brake, it stops quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, the turning radius, as it said, is very tight. So you can easily navigate corners. You know, I'm coming up to a junction and somebody else is um, making a left in front of me and I'm looking to make a right. I'm not yeah. worried about going yeah. out too far in the not intersection. Bothered. No, no big it's deal. It's super easy to handle. Yeah. The infotainment system is very intuitive. Okay. Yes. I have owned uh, recently Chevy products, no, so I, I know how they work. But I agree. But it's like a breeze. 
are there improvements that they could make? Yeah. I, I, the interior, when they update it, please update that because it yes. feels like they just stuck a big screen in the middle. And yes. the um, the roof panels, it has four roof panels, uh-huh. just like a Bronco. Uh-huh. And when you hit any kind of bump or uh, turn a corner too hard, they squeak rattle? and rattle. Oh, yeah. The fit and finish does matter. I mean, are there little... For the most part, the fit and finish is fantastic. It's okay. just the rooftop. Oh, interesting. Which, I, if you pay $110,000 for a vehicle, yeah, it's going to no, bother you, want, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about the, um, like, have you used the little containers, like the the storage containers? Like, with I remember in the cabin, there were some sort of clever storage containers that they had put in the back, in the front. Just I haven't, to store. I haven't things. been in the back okay. other than to install child seats. Okay. Okay. Uh, my daughters love it, by the way, because you can <laughs> roll down the rear window. Uh-huh. I have the pickup That's truck cool. version. That's and cool. It's awesome. But yeah, there's a ton of storage in yeah. the front for like mm-hmm. as many big gulps as you can possibly <laughs> uh, buy. And Slurpees. I've I've got all the pool equipment in there. Yeah. Cool. Um, so. Like as a family vehicle, it's very That's functional. Cool. Let's I, say I do. I do agree. It didn't. It you know you kind of go into driving those things with a little like oh boy here we go. And I remember just getting out of it and thinking it's fun. It's cool. It's yeah. fun. They did a really good job. It's it's exactly what it promises. Like when you look at it and when you drive it and it delivers. And when you, you know? pull up quickly mm-hmm. to some person in the left lane who isn't quite paying attention and they look behind them and see that grill oh yeah they do move over to have the you right. got a lot of hate matt not really <laughs> but i just you know when i'm when i'm driving through town a lot of times uh, i'll notice like a a, a a mom like give me yeah. a look like yeah, how yeah. dare you oh, how dare you drive disgusting. that in our school district oh, yeah. <laughs> but on the other hand you know it's like a nice bluish like gray yeah, it's nice. and it's got the american yeah. flags electric, you know, bro. Go, go usa and yeah. it's electric so no yeah. no worries you can't hate you can't hate yeah. actually on that so yeah i i'm i'm pretty i'm a pretty big fan of it i would say cool but I like i'm a sucker for any big truck with with big wheels i mean i always come back to the g-wagon i love it Yes. Like I, it's it's an iconic shape. It's polarizing. It's been around forever. It does the job. Th- this Fantastic that to me V8. falls into this category of it's a specific philosophy that has been executed. And maybe you hate it, maybe you like it, but it, it is what it is. You can take it or leave it. I really like that. I yeah. just I just like give me something interesting, and maybe I'll hate it, but at least it's something. Uh, exactly, you know? exactly. Yeah. At least it's not another jelly bean right it's not uh, an appliance yeah oh what have you got coming up anything oh you know on monday i'm gonna go finally drive the 911 gts the hybrid. Oh, in sevilla yeah, in sevilla yep nice yeah, that's coming up. yeah I'll, I'll, I'll let you know very nice okay so the screen is the biggest problem that i have with that you know the lack of analog i will report and... back speaking of you know the bugatti stink trying to stay analog i guess Porsche didn't. Yeah, I don't know if it's a money saving thing or. I need to. I'll be sure to. Like getting rid of a handbrake. Like, why do that? (laughs) I don't get it. I'm sure they'll have an answer. I'm sure they will. What about you? What do you have coming up? Let's see. So, in terms of uh, vehicles, I, fingers crossed, um, am going to get a Corvette E Ray. Well, that'll be after you come back from Sevilla. We might have an issue with that. What's that? I seem to have. I'm not supposed to be checking email this week, but I. Might have got an email where they said, never mind, due to undo, unforeseen circumstances, we can't fulfill your press. Oh, loan. that's a bummer. I haven't replied to that email because it annoyed me. But um, So the cool thing is we're going to, the idea was we were both going to drive at that the vehicle at the same time. time. So you would have it in yes. LA. Yes. I'll have it here in New York. Yes. You're and, getting that next week? Uh, or the week after? The week, the week after. after. The week yeah, after. Me too. Me yeah. too. Hmm. Um, I'll have to coordinate on that. But I'm also excited about it because my friend David Weston, who mm-hmm. anchors Wall Street Week, has an original Gen 1 C1 Corvette. Cool. And cool. I, I, he lives near me. So I oh, was like, go dude, drive. I'm going to come. I'm going to get this Corvette E-Ray. It's like the newest, most cutting edge. I know it's not the Z06, but it's like even more because it's electric, right? Or yes. hybrid. Yes. Uh, I'm going to bring it over and then we're going to shoot a video where David yes. has his C1 and I have this and I get his take on this one, you know? Yes. And I get to sit in his. I've never been in his before. And um, I think it'll be cool. a cool compare is and he contrast. A big, he's a big Corvette guy. Like He is. He, he doesn't, it's not just the one. Like, when this we is had, a thing for him. When, we, when he heard we were having Jim Farley on the podcast, he said, <laughs> ask him why they don't make a sports car. 
<laughs> he says uh, he contends that Corvette is uh, the only the American-made sports car I mean, because he says yeah. the Mustang has doesn't have t- isn't a two-seater. Yeah. You know? Well, as a Corvette owner, I'm not disagreeing. Yeah. So I'm excited uh, to do that, and that'll be, be good. A, a that'll be great. If you don't get one. Uh, but... I'm, I'll sort it out. They can yeah. find another one. Well, and also you will just have driven the yeah, 911 so GTS in Sevilla, which yeah. is I can, I'm not pretty complaining. Good. Yeah. yeah. I hope you get to go like around the region. Me too. I, you know, I like I like having track time, of course, but honestly, it's more real world yeah. to drive the car on on roads. So yeah. I, I'm I'm imagining it's probably a little of both. I feel like track time almost does a disservice to consumers who I know. listen uh, to this podcast or read your reviews to try and decide if they would I want know. a car, because and you see like all these car journalists you know flogging vehicles and motorcycles around the track and it doesn't really translate at all to what we do on the road no i'm rolling my eyes a little bit right now because it's so true i mean they like look we're we're journalists no one out there is a professional driver most of them if you know 99 percent of them have never even you know raced in any sort of amateur or professional capacity or been a drive instructor. Anything. But neither myself is anyone included. who's going to yeah, buy the car. Myself included. Yeah. I would never I would never pretend to say that I am. So it is a kind of, you know, yeah, it's nice to drive on the track, but I'm, I'm so with you. It's actually much more usable and relatable and you can really sift through the car to have it on the road. Because the other thing with the track is it's very, very, very controlled. You know, you have a specific amount of laps. You have a specific amount of time. A lot of times it's lead follow. And so it's just, it's extremely controlled. And it just seems a little like this is just for journalists bragging rights, which yeah. I really don't care exactly. about. Exactly. You're, yeah. you're, you're going to probably really enjoy your experience. So you're yes. going to... By the way, in terms of the 9-11, like of the million people who have bought a 9-11... How many people are doing track days in it? Very small percentage. Right? Very small. I would imagine if you want to go on the track, then you're going to get a Cayman. Like not a 911, right? Every every pro driver that I talk to that like drives is on these drives. I always say like, which car do you want on the track? They all love the Cayman. They all say it's far more balanced and far more predictable and just a lot more fun. And you can really get really you can get more out of it with less effort. I feel like a 911 is your daily driver. It's a great daily driver. Yeah. So you should Porsche should invite you out to commute in Atlanta. You know they should. <laughs> no, they should invite you to a suburb know, no, of Atlanta no, no, and invite you to don't. drive into the middle of the please city during don't. rush hour, oh, and that no. should be what you write the review on. Just I'll commute in LA. That's fine. <laughs> Atlanta seems really hot and sticky. All right, so I'm excited for uh, to hear about that. And I'm, Me too. Are you taking Magnus with you to Sevilla? No, sadly no. What? I know. I know. I why know, why not? It seems like the perfect opportunity. You I just know. got married. Now I you're know. going to Sevilla. The two of you could go to um, the Alhambra, you know, know, in Granada. I know, it's killing me. You could me. spend a few days on the beach in Marbella, you I know? know. And he looks great in a Speedo, too. You should really see him. I've heard about once that it, butt. Once we get that sunscreen on, you know, he's ready to go. I know. it's <laughs> we ha- We have a lot of fun. All right. Well, I, I hope you uh, have a good time and do remember the sunscreen. <laughs> I know. All right. So, Friday. Uh, dear listener, remember to send us any questions or suggestions. Uh, the email address, once again, is hotpursuit at bloomberg.net. And that's all we got for this week. We'll see you back here next week. I'm Matt Miller. And I'm Hannah Elliott. And this is Bloomberg. Bloomberg.